Okay, this is uh, Calc AB 2004, um, number four from the AP exam. So let's uh, take a look. Um, so part A says um, we're given this function and we just have to confirm what the uh, derivative is. So uh, let's do that a piece at a time. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. Uh, the derivative of 4y squared is going to require the chain rule. So we get 8y and then dy dx. So remember with... Uh, Implicit, the derivative of y is always dy dx, so you got to throw that in there. Um, equals, the derivative of 7 is 0. That's the number one thing that people forget to do. The derivative of a constant is 0. Um, and then we're going to need the uh, product rule here. So what I'm going to do is consider the first term to be 3x, um, and then the second to be y. So it's first times the derivative of the second, and then plus second derivative of the first. A um, little rearranging. So I'm going to bring everything that's not a dy dx over to the right. So I subtracted the 2x. And then bring everything that has a dy dx over to the left. So I'm going to subtract 3x dy dx. Uh, I'm going to show the factoring here. Doing this on my own, I probably would have jumped pretty much right to the answer. Um, but anyway, we get this. And then I can divide it through to get that. And that's exactly what we had to show. So we're done. Uh, but I do want to point out that you may have done it slightly differently. Um, if you move things to different sides uh, than what I moved them to, you might have ended up with this. So 2x minus 3y over 3x minus 8y. And then you still have to show that it's equal to the thing they tell you to say it's equal to. So you can accomplish that by multiplying uh, the numerator and the denominator by negative 1. And then when you distribute, you end up exactly where we need to be. So that's not a problem. It doesn't mean you did it wrong. It just means you got uh, something a little different. Uh, so the next thing that we wanted to do was uh, show that there's a point um, where x equals 3 and the slope is 0. So I'm going to start by saying, uh, well, actually, that the tangent line is horizontal, which means the slope is 0. So I start with that, dy dx equals 0, um, which means that the thing I just derived, which they conveniently give you, so if you actually got that part wrong, you could just use what they gave you here. Um, so we have that equals 0 denominator gone. So I have that this is true, but I know that x is going to be 3. So if x is 3, I really have 3y minus 6 equals 0, which tells me that y equals 2. So the point that I'm using is 3, 2, um, but I still have to confirm that this point is actually on the curve. I mean, it said to show that that's true. So I showed that there's a point with x equals 3 where the derivative is 0. Now I need to show it's on the curve. So here's the curve. And if I plug in uh, the 3 that I found and the 2 that I found, um, so first I did the left side, showed d equal 25, did the right side, showed d equal 25. Um, so the point is on the curve, and I know that the slope is 0 at that point. So that's what they were asking me to show. So I did it. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you here is kind of a warning. Uh, there's another way to do this problem. So the other way to do this is to start with the fun the uh, well the curve that you're given. So if you do that, we have x squared plus four y squared equals blah 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 blah. Um, if I plug in three for x, I'm going to get this, which is a quadratic. And if I keep going, I will get this, um, and I can factor this. And when I factor it, I end up getting the point that I need, so 3, 2, and also this point 3, 1 fourth. Um, so it was a two-parter, right? I'd show there was a point on the curve where x equals 3, and at that point the slope is 0. The problem with this second point that I found um, is that the slope is just not 0, so it doesn't satisfy the conclusion that we need. So it was a better idea in this to start with the slope being um, start with the slope being 0 and then work your way back and show that it's on the curve also. Um, you can do it this way, but it, it leads to that kind of extraneous solution. Um, and then the next thing that we were asked to do in part C involves a second derivative. Uh, you'll notice that the first derivative is a quotient, so this is going to require the quotient rule. Um, so here we go. It's going to be bottom. Derivative of the top, which the derivative of y is dy dx, so 3 dy dx, and then minus 2. And then minus, do not forget it's minus, um, top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 8 dy dx minus 3. And then all over 
the bottom squared. Don't forget the squared. Um, and now what we need to do is substitute in some things. So here's what we know. We know dy dx at the point we're interested in is 0. We know x is 3. We know y is 2. So let's substitute all that in. So at the point 3, 2, the second derivative is going to work out to 7 because 8 times 2 minus 9, so 16 minus 9 is 7. Um, when dy dx is 0, so that's just times negative 2. And then minus uh, 3y minus 2x is actually 0, so it doesn't really matter what we get on this second part, but it is negative 3. And then divided by um, 7 squared, and that gives us negative 2 sevenths. So now we just have to write up our conclusion, which is um, the first derivative is 0, the second derivative is less than 0, and that means that the curve is going to have a relative or a local maximum. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what the second derivative test will tell you. Um, and so that's what we did. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.